It's a shame because there are many elements within the Invasion event that are fun. I just don't think Blizzard have implemented the event in the right way. So are we playing Classic or Retail World of Warcraft? This seems to be one of the biggest sentiments in the community right now. But why? Today we will attempt to review and evaluate the quality of Season of Discovery's Phase 3. Blizzard took a huge risk with many experimental design choices with this update, but did it pay off? Guys, if you're running out of stuff to do in Season of Discovery, you might want to finally give Raid Shadow Legends a spin. I know you've probably seen about 2 million ads for this game by now, but to be fair, it is a really fun game to play, with amazing graphics, epic boss battles, and with over 800 champions now to collect and customize. Raid Shadow Legends is available on PC, Android, and iOS. You can just click on the link in the description or scan my QR code now to download the game and get some amazing champions for free. Raid have also released a huge new update, the Cursed City. This is a brand new area where you can explore dark secrets of an ancient kingdom fight against powerful enemies and earn some pretty good rewards. The Cursed City is full of surprises and challenges, so you better be prepared. But don't worry, because Raid is hooking everyone up who watches this video with two free epic champions to help you out. Light Swan, and then when you reach level 15, you can unlock Juliana. Light Swan is a holy warrior who can debuff enemies and revive your allies, whilst Juliana is a fiery assassin who can deal massive damage with a poison and burn skill. These two champions are perfect for the Cursed City, and you can get them for free when you download Raid using my link in the description or again scan the QR code. And if you can believe it, Raid are giving you even more stuff with an additional champion called Oboro, a strong epic champion providing a significant advantage early game. All you have to do is use the code GETOBORO within the initial 72 hours of registering for the game. So guys, what are you waiting for? Don't miss out on these opportunities. Click the link below to start your adventure in the Cursed City. But anyway, let's get on with the video. The most experimental feature of Phase 3 definitely has to be the new PvE world event, Nightmare Incursions. They are precisely where the Emerald Dream Dragon world boss locations were in the original classic World of Warcraft. They always had these strange portals behind them, and it was always quite an anti-climax originally for players because we quickly discovered that they go to nowhere. So this world event feels like cut vanilla World of Warcraft content. Season of Discovery is finally starting to become a real Classic Plus server, which is great. Ultimately, this is what Classic players want. It's especially obvious when you look at how big the vanilla plus private server scene is. Within the portal, there are 17 different objectives for you to complete, all basically the same across the worlds. They involve killing mobs, talking to NPCs, picking up items, and killing mini world bosses. The areas are packed with players from both factions, both fighting against or even with each other, to complete the objectives, and most of the time, it's a pretty fun event to just go and zerg and get a load of XP and gold. With this event, there is also a new faction reputation to farm, with some pretty powerful rewards. Personally, I found the event to be entertaining, and it's good that Blizzard are finally starting to understand what makes vanilla WoW shine, and why it is so fondly remembered, and that's open world group content. That being said, there are a number of problems with this event, and players on forums and in my comment section, as you can see, are expressing our distaste with the event, calling it a retail WoW event. I honestly don't think that tagging this event as a retail WoW event is necessarily totally fair. Firstly, at Vanilla WoW's core, there are world events like this one. The original world bosses, Gates of AQ opening, Scourge Invasion event, and the pre-Battleground Hillsbrad Foothills skirmishes. These are defining features of Vanilla WoW. Although, I do understand why many classic players are not a huge fan of Nightmare Incursions. I mostly leveled my character level 40 to 50 with the event, but honestly, in the end, I did find it about as stale as a politician's personality. And now that I'm max level, I honestly feel no motivation to go back. Particularly, as it wasn't long until the maximum XP per hour strategy was figured out that only involved you quickly running around and doing the mission report and recover quests. So many people spent their leveling journey in Phase 3 doing nothing but running around, doing some quick fetch quests on repeat, which, let's be honest, it's not very fun. It's obviously a bit boring, and it's totally trivialized the leveling experience, because why bother doing open world questing, exploration, and dungeon quest chains when you can just do the invasion event? 
It's a shame because there are many elements within the invasion event that are fun. I just don't think Blizzard have implemented the event in the right way. I don't understand why it's a permanent event. Why is it not a recurring event with a limited time frame like STV and the Ashenvale event? I personally think it would function better as an event that only happens about three times a day, but rewarded the original amount of gold that it did reward with more XP and reputation. This way it's a fun dynamic world event that you can do now and again to break up your leveling, rather than a permanent repetitive grind fest which turns out to be the best XP in the game so you feel obligated to do it. Because honestly if you look at it, it kinda is just a daily quest hub zone but the quest you can do infinitely on repeat. And for the love of god, the amount of inventory space that those mission report things take up is actually evil. I think every time the event is up, it should be slightly different each time with different quests and enemies, and at the end, it has a grand finale where a big world boss spawns that you have to defeat and Bob your uncle. The event is over until it pops up again. They're updating the event this week with a number of emergency hotfixes that nerfs the amount of XP you can get from the quest, but they're also buffing the player XP buff to 75% between the levels of 40 to 50. Unfortunately, I think what will inevitably happen is players will just find a new, different optimal XP grind method should very likely be grinding Zorfarak. And the level up versions of this event, meaning Dustwood and Ashenvale, will just become a ghost town and the event will become end game only, which is a shame. In my humble opinion, I think it should have just been a limited event that happens a few times a day, grants loads of rewards to break up your leveling grind, and then, you know, it should also be layered very heavily so that people don't lag and struggle to actually complete the objectives. By the way guys, I've made a map of the optimal route to get the most XP per hour from the Nightmare Incursion event. All subscribers can get instant access to that straight away, just check out my subscriber only video. The latest raid has also triggered a lot of discussion in the community. Interestingly, not only have Blizzard decided to make this a one week lockout, I it's can a make very a difficult subscriber raid only video. That'd be standards, really good. even after the nerfs. As you can only watch video, this if you press uh, only 30 then they'll just unsubscribe after they watch That's only 1.97%. The main progress curve is Aranicus, who has an extortionately high HP pool. Fights with this boss are lasting 6 to 8 minutes. Now, I, like many other players, do like a challenging raid, but a lot of players don't. Raiding for many classic WoW players is about chilling on Discord with your friends, with a couple of beers and having a laugh and smashing some content. Not dissimilar to playing a game like Hell Divers, Hell Divers, what the hell, Hell Divers or Sea of Thieves. You know, many classic players just aren't looking for a highly competitive and difficult gaming environment. Sunken Temple is definitely going to be a different kind of raiding experience. You won't be guaranteed a full raid clear week one. In one way, this can be seen as fun. A more challenging raid requires more effort, teamwork and strategy from your raid team. You will fail and wipe many times, but learn from every failure until you eventually defeat the boss, which in my experience is a much more satisfying experience than the raid just being an easy face roll where you smash it week one and the bosses just drop. A lot more patience is now demanded in the average sod player. I think one thing that many classic players forget is week on week the raid teams player power will increase, making the harder bosses at the end of a raid easier and easier as time goes by. Does it really matter that you don't get all the bosses defeated immediately week one? Does getting the raid done in week one slightly cheapen and rush your raiding experience for the phase? And does the boredom setting faster because there's no end goal in sight anymore? Many players do have a pump and dump mindset towards games these days, even MMOs. They just want to clear their latest raid content as fast as possible and move on to a different game and wait for the next phase to come out. But I think MMOs should be fun and engaging in different creative and challenging ways to keep players playing the game throughout an entire phase and not be bored. But also not keep you compelled to play the game like certain WoW expansions have done in the past with features like artifact power, that's a big no-no. But many players just simply want a more casual and fun raiding experience and they don't want too much to do in the game because they want the freedom for more personal time or to simply play other games. So that's why I feel like Blizzard have taken a massive risk with this one, because the raid does cater to more hardcore players. The top guilds are probably going to have a lot of fun in this raid, but the majority are not. And this is very likely going to become a similar situation to Maru during the Sunwell patch in TBC Classic. This may deter a lot of players from playing the game because they can no longer progress, which will be very sad to see. 
Although I personally prefer more challenging raid content, I shouldn't be catered to because I represent a minority opinion in the SOD community. Any other day, I can just go play Cataclysm Classic when that comes out. A number of very welcome changes came with Phase 3 like Jewel Spec, a race-wide weapon skill buff, and a new PvP set with much more. Dual spec was long overdue. With so many different runes now in the game, along with the customizability of a vanilla wild talent tree, I would quite honestly prefer five different specs on my warlock. So dual spec was definitely needed, especially as many people like to switch between PvP and PvE content seamlessly rather than going to visit the trainer. The raid wide weapon buff means that races will be a little bit more balanced. No longer will all alliance players, for instance, feel obligated to pick human. You have more freedom to pick your race based on its unique gimmicks and looks. They finally also added a PvP set. That means that the more hardcore PvP players no longer have to bother doing PvE content in order to progress their character, meaning that players don't have to do stuff that they don't want to do in order to get that competitive edge in Battlegrounds and the Blood Moon event. So overall, Phase 3 is looking pretty strong, it particularly caters to my unique MMO gameplay taste, but I don't think it really is the preferred design approach that many current Classic World players are used to. For the first time in my comment section, I am seeing a lot of negative opinions about Season of Discovery, whereas it's normally the other way around and I get put on a pitchfork for saying anything remotely negative. On top of this, many players are frustrated with the fact that the people who didn't experience login issues within the first few hours of the game's launch were able to take advantage of the extremely high gold gold you know, yeah my brain's breaking it's been a long day the extremely high gold rewards from nightmare incursions some players were able to get over a thousand gold in only a few hours so that was slightly problematic but let me know what you guys think my name is meta goblins in the next video ciao I done with kick did i tell you i was trying to stream on facebook yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh i'm not trying to stream on facebook because i haven't got facebook so uh that's not happening but good good evening everybody good evening oh just in time just in time what's up guys hello hello oh hello, hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> there. special surprise guest right all right i'm just gonna have to so uh, oh actually that's not why that's not done anything to mess the cameras up that is beautiful Perfect. hi spirit What's up, guys? Hi. Hi, Scotty. Hello. Hello. What's up, girl? What's up, Howard? What up, what up, what up? What's up, gamers? Uh, just talk amongst yourselves while I get Spirit's uh, camera set up. Yeah. Uh, you two, I don't know, have met each other. So, Hammer, meet Spirit. Spirit, meet Hammer. Nice to meet you, Spirit. Lovely to meet you as well. <laughs> when, when I checked your YouTube video out, I was like, oh my god, I follow you. <laughs> no, did I give her the follow-up. Did you follow him for his WoW stuff, or Scotty actually knew Hammer from his, like, content creation, like, tips and tricks and stuff? WoW stuff, yeah. WoW stuff? Okay. Yeah. Your video, like, well done on the the 30 second guides, too, the short guides on the, the fights in ST. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. Dude, that was my first time trying to get into doing, like, a raid guide type of uh, <clears throat> video, so I wasn't sure how it would do, but it seems like it's doing pretty well. The, sh the short videos are my favorite. Like, if it's a 10-minute boss guide fight for one fight, it's like, ah, that's too long. 30 yeah. seconds, like, minute, it's it's sick. Yeah. I love those. I, I tried to keep it to, like, 60 seconds-ish per boss, and then, like, obviously, like, Shade and uh, Hakar were a little bit longer, but not bad. It's kind of fun making it, too. Jolly good. All right, we all set. We're we're all set. We're we're all on. We're we're here. So yeah, hello uh, everybody in chat. Uh, what the fuck is that green screen background? The green screen, bruv. You can't see it. What are you talking about? Why is there always oh, one? Wow. Why is there always one? And it's you. And it's this early on in the in the podcast. Um. Right. Go. Le lead us into what we're going to talk about. Uh. We are on a very strict schedule tonight. Um. Because people have got sunken temples. Uh, I've got bit, I've got things that I'm gonna do which is not really suitable to talk about uh, in public, but you can probably work out what I'm gonna go and do. I'm gonna watch Fallout because it launches in three hours, and I cannot wait. I've been waiting for this TV series; it feels like forever. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, but anyway, go. We've got 
all season of Discovery, if Ka or if, if Scotty tries to mention Kata, then he owes a uh, gifted sub to both Hammer and Spirit for every time he brings Kata into the conversation. <laughs> so we need somebody to keep track of how many times he says Hang on, Kata. hang on, hang on, oh, hang on, hang on. With that bullshit, it's fine to talk about season of Discovery in, in the other podcast that we do. Uh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. well, well that, that's, that ain't that some shit. I mean, Kata is relevant right now with Season of Discovery because of the overlap of, like, you know, launches and stuff like that, so... That's true, that's true. I'm just uh -huh. not allowed to say the, the, the name of that game. No, uh, I, was, uh, I was baiting you. I was just baiting <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, if Hammer and Spirit say it, it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, it's just I'm not allowed to. Uh, but what I can talk about is um, I never thought I would say this. I am mega, mega excited for a retail-related announcement today. Like, I've looked at it and I yeah. thought, actually, this could be really fun. Mainly because Mr. Pandaria will always go down as one of my favorite expansions. Um, and having it, like, that weird. Like, it looks weird, but I feel like it could be fun. And you've not got, like, all the people with all their retail shit and, you know, where they've been playing it for the last 20 years. You know, it's a, it's like a fresh, a fresh mop experience, completely different to what it was before. And... You don't need Dragonflight to play it. I thought like that was the best part. You know, it's like classic players with their sub that they've got now can go and try this new new event. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. You know, it is what it is. So you wait said minute, I couldn't minute. talk I about Kata. About there, mate, there's a on this weekend it's being PTR tested, a mop special event server, level ten to seventy with all raiding content, dungeons, like everything. Oh my it's like it's like their next plunderstorm but pv more pve focused you know it's like a fresh mop server where everybody starts at level 10 you cannot move characters on there or anything like that and everything that you get on there throughout the however long it runs for you'll be able to take to your retail account um so as soon as i saw it i was like i i hardly yeah, ever cool. even open those retail related posts you know, i see yeah, it and i'm like i don't care good. Uh, well, as soon as I saw Mop and I saw that it's free, like, why not go and give it a go over the weekend, you know? Yeah. That is but awesome. For the past week, though, we've been playing Season of Discovery, right? Yeah, every everybody yes. in this call has been sure. no life yeah. sod. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've got uh, a lot to talk about with it. There's the Incursion event, the uh, changes to some dungeons, Sunken Temple, the new raid. It feels like this uh, phase has already been out for like three, four weeks, but it hasn't even been a full week yet. Like that, it seems crazy to me every time I think about it. Uh, some new PvP stuff, some fun items like the crate, the bush, the uh, the rainbow trinket, uh, profession stuff, uh, waylaid supply changes. So we're gonna try to hit as many of those topics as we can. We're not doing like new stuff. This is like the the chillest show excuse me chillest show we've probably had in a while usually we're looking at blue posts we're looking at stuff and we're trying to break all that stuff down this is more a uh, nice laid back hey how have you been doing in uh season of discovery phase three how is it feeling so big vibes tonight big huge massive <laughs> insane vibes <laughs> huh that sounded like one of one of my thumbnails <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, but as always, I'll get the uh, the stuff out of the way. Uh, questions for us, if you have during the show, hit us with a super chat. It helps support Scotty and I and uh, keeps us coming back, putting out more and more podcasts week by week. And we're up to like five a week at this point now, like four kata, one sod is a pretty even balance. So, yeah, just keep us coming back, support us, hit us with the questions, and we'll answer any questions from the super chats. All right. Anything else, Scotty, before we get into it? No, no. Just, uh, yeah, really a, a quick thanks to those that watch uh, watch both podcasts, the one that I can't talk about and this one. Um, like, it is actually, it's you guys that support the, the podcast that genuinely keep us coming back. Like, you know, I know everybody says that and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, but it is. This is the longest podcast I've ever done, you know, because I do like four or five episodes and get bored. Like, but it's actually the community that watch this podcast that is the reason that I personally want to keep doing it. And it's going to go all the way through that game that's coming out after Wrath and, and all through Season of Discovery, even during the times where I'm not particularly invested in Season of Discovery. You know, it's not like just going to stop because I get bored or something. Um, 
yeah you know so thanks for, for watching and obviously to the guests as well that that come on and, and torture herself uh obviously appreciate all those as well that sounded like i'm, I'm, I'm not dying by the way uh or anything like you know <laughs> it's just we don't actually say it enough so there we go yeah you were actually quiet for that whole like intro that i did there so you said you were going to be quiet today because it's sod and you're sticking to your word and it's making me a little nervous are you sure you're okay scotty um yeah there so I, I mean i'm kind of i'm kind of a little bit distracted but not distracted enough I, where i'm not listening yeah i, I would say you're doing archaeology right now you no 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 no, no 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 last night doing archaeology I, i'm pretty sure you're still doing archaeology my man hammer knows exactly what i'm doing <laughs> hammer knows uh, exactly no. what i'm doing because I, oh can i just like i want to start just really yeah, briefly yeah, yeah. with um you know the fact that i said i'm not interested in sod just in case anyone's like oh what is he not playing it i am distracted because i'm actually on it right now but uh, where you guys and girls have gone in and, and got from 40 to 50 and you're enjoying sunken temple i've started from level one so i'm not enjoying it quite as much right at this moment in time but it's because I've re-rolled from Horde to Alliance and from EU to NA to play in Hammer Dance's Guild, actually. So at the moment I'm cool. like weeks I'm like a week behind everybody on everything. So Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good time. What an incredible way to segue into the leveling topic of forty to fifty, ladies first spirit. How was that journey? What did you do to level up your first tune? How many tunes do you have at 50? I, I think there's more than one. So how have you been leveling up your character so far? I have two level 50s already, and I did that in 24 hours, in the span of 24 hours. One priest, one druid, and yesterday I started my second priest, and she's already 45 and a half, which is pretty insane. And wow. last night I did a ZF, and I got like a half a level in ZF. So yeah, I it was it's the most... It's the least stress I've ever been leveling any tunes because last phase was just it was a slog and I was dragging my feet this time I'm like let's go I want my tunes up so I can actually like discover what's what else is out there so yeah did you do incursions did you mainly quest by how how are you doing dungeon spamming at all did you sit in uh, ZF for five hours on your first tune or so I got dragged around to do pre-quests for like a whole entire week. I logged on and one of our raid team leads whispers me and was like, don't even turn your pre-quests in, just get into incursions. And I was like, there's no way in hell. I just spent all of this time and you <laughs> just not turn those in. So I didn't, I barely, I think I maybe did two or three hubs of turn-ins for pre-quests and I went straight into incursions. Yeah, and my druid, the same thing, straight to incursions. And that was both like day one, so that was free xp nerf have you gone Thursday, have, you, yeah. have you gone back on your second priest and done it since the xp nerf i did it yesterday and it still felt like i was doing it on thursday i can see how it's starting to slow down at level 45 but that's normal that's the way it was anyways but we got like they nerfed all of the xp that you get from the incursions but then you got a 15 percent more increase in experience from the buff anyways so i feel like it's kind of helping a bit but I mean, it, okay. just, it just feels good. ZF, yeah, I, I'd rather do incursions to level up. All right, sweet. Hammer, how have you been leveling up your characters? I'm assuming you have at least a warrior to, to 50. Anything yeah. else? Just just one main so far? J How's just it? my warrior. I, I was uh, trying to level up my rogue over on Crusader Strike on Horde side, um, but there was just like, I, I wanted to get everything done on my warrior, like farm all the wild offerings and all that stuff. But, um, my leveling experience, I'll be completely honest, was horrendous on launch day. I was, I went into incursions immediately, the second that we could, um, and it was so laggy for me that we, we were like, there's no way that this is going to be faster than just spamming dungeons. So we didn't stick it out, which now we know was the wrong thing to do. We went to Cathedral. We stayed in Cathedral till like 42. We went to Alderman till like 44, and then we went to ZF, and I sat in Zulfarak for like six hours. And then when I, you know, I was obviously looking at what levels people were and all this, I'm like, huh, this was a really bad idea. And now we're really far behind and put in so much time, and we were all burnt out from just spamming ZF. So <laughs> I think I got to like 48, 
and then I logged off, I went to sleep, I woke up in the morning, I finished the last two with incursions, and I was like, are you, it took me probably the same amount of time that it took me to go from like 40 to 46, I did 48 to 50 in incursions. That's how much <laughs> faster it really was. Like, it was so fast that I was like, this is insane. Like, I was like, there is no way they intended it to be this fast. So, like, you might as well just put us at level 50 and just skip leveling completely because, you know, you were, you were really, you were just going in and you were just running in a circle, you know, some, like NASCAR, like make a left sometimes, throw yourself out of bounds, and that you were just getting levels like every 30 minutes. And um, it, it was crazy. So if I could go back, I would have stuck it out and stayed at the incursions. But in my head, I was like, well, this is like weird and buggy and laggy and like something is not right and we're going to end up wasting a bunch of time here. So we left, but joke was on us because it was way better. So. so it's been a big, big point of... Um well a, a, a big point all round about incursions are they good are they bad you know obviously they in my opinion weren't handled correctly anyway you know when they've got to change something that drastically that quick um it clearly weren't tested particularly well um but what are your thoughts on incursions you know because some people are like they're terrible you know they take everyone out of the open world they didn't want people to dungeon grind uh you know people moan about dungeon grinding because you don't get to go out and just be in the, the normal world and then they add incursions where you're doing it, it exactly that yeah yeah i mean in my opinion i i like the speed at which you can level in them right and if it's in the game obviously you're going to just use the fastest method i'm, I'm, I'm not going to be out in the world uh, if that's in the game because there's uh, you're just there's no point unless that's what you're just doing to enjoy questing or whatever right um but i do while i enjoy the speed at which you can level in them i do feel like it's kind of like what you just said about you know it's it's really similar to just spamming dungeons it does keep everyone out of the world and it and it makes me wonder um so if they want you to just be cap level so bad why are we even doing like these like phase locks or anything why aren't we just allowed to level to 60 and then they just start releasing content um because it feels like you you it, it almost creates like a fomo right it creates this fomo where Big like time. on you need to hit 50 as fast as you possibly can so you will do the most unenjoyable boring thing possible to get there the fastest way possible to then farm your prebis and all this as fast as possible to get into the raid before the first lockout in three days Right. So it to me, it's like it, it's not good design for truly enjoying, if, you know, whatever they create. If they want you to really be enjoying it and find it and discover it and this and that, it kind of completely negates that, in my opinion. And that may be a super hot take. I don't know. But well, my question would be more. So I, I always uh, like since phase one, I, I'm never really thinking about right now, you know, as in how is it affecting the Obviously, I am thinking about how it affects the game right now, but I think of all, about all of these things that get introduced and how they can be abused or, you know, how they can fall down later on in the game. And are we basically already setting ourselves up to say, right, okay, guys, don't worry about pre-questing at 50. You know, th there's no point. We'll literally do 50 to 60 in incursions. Right. That's my point, yeah. What are your thoughts on it, Spirit? Any of you got any any hot takes for incursions? <laughs> I loved it. It wasn't the most engaging gameplay. After a while, it was a little bit mind numbing, but I loved it. It was just I had a different journey though in the game. Like I had two tunes that were on um, Wild Growth, and then I moved to Crusader Strike. So Phase Two for me was just a lot of catch up. So I think just from a personal standpoint i really enjoy it just like not having to sit in a dungeon and, and take a long time to level but i understand the other side of it and hanra i agree with you too like it, it is a little questionable and should we just get there that quickly as well so yeah and don't don't get me wrong there is a sub, like super dopamine hit when you are handing in like 15 of those quests and you watch yourself go from like 10 percent to the next level and halfway to the next level and you got like 130 gold you were like whoa yeah, this is awesome nice. yeah um but yeah like the gameplay itself it's like if it you know to me it seems like season of discovery started as like one vision of like let's try and get like classic like get people out in the world and discovering things and playing and doing all this stuff slowly which phase one really did feel like that in the beginning um and i think people really loved that 
Um, it seems like it's kind of transformed into this, like, next phase is coming out in seven days, by the way. Um, level up in eight hours to 50 from 40, and the raid is unlocked day one. You have three days to do it, or you miss a lockout, and it's a seven-day lockout. Yeah, everything does seem very... Um, I'm not even talking just about Season of Discovery. Like, everything at the moment seems all about how quick can we do stuff? How quick yeah. can we get through this phase? How quick can we get through this expansion? How quick can we, you know, put a put an, a special event out that we've worked on for a year and just get it over and done with so we can move on to the next one? You know, it is like you're not getting that time to, to let things, like, settle down too much, which I'm not saying I'm against it because I think it's great that there's so many options uh, of games and, and uh, game modes, especially, like, with what I said about the mop server coming soon as well. A, a lot of options. Um, but, yeah, some of it just needs to be left to breathe. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out, by the way, j just in case any any of you you guys not necessarily chat, uh, thought that I'm against incursions, I'm not, by the way. You know, as in, I just wondered what your opinions on them were. Because, me personally, if the quickest way to level was to dance naked in Stormwind for eight hours, I'd do that. You know, I don't right. care. I mean, like, it doesn't matter whether it's dungeons, questing, grinding, like, whatever the quickest way to, to max level is, I'll do. If it's incursions, I'll do it. Um, it my point is, it was more... Yeah, sort of the contradictory nature almost of um, what you said, Hammer, was was bang on the money. You know, as in, it's as if they had a vision for what they saw Season of Discovery being and nailed it in phase one. And then as the, we're going through the phases, what it was in phase one is is changing quite drastically as they're putting more, I don't want to say it because I'm going to annoy everyone, more retail-esque systems in, more retail, you know, that is perfectly fine yeah. to level ridiculously quick in an instanced area, yeah, ignoring everything else that's going on. Uh, so, but that neither of yeah. those ways is right, is it? Because everyone sees Season of Discovery as something different. So it's like, what well, it, it doesn't really matter what you prefer, there will be someone who likes it even if you don't. So one thing that I experienced while doing the incursions, I did it for, I think it was four or five levels. And then I did it up to pretty much level 50. It was like 46 to 49 or something like that. And then once I started to go out and try to do quests and do dungeons, I was like, wait a second, my defense skill didn't get raised at all because all I was doing was running around interacting with objects. I wasn't getting in combat with anything other than like tagging a mob hitting it with like a moon fire and just running on to the next thing getting credit for that quest and then like my dagger skill was low i don't know if melee had an issue with like their weapon skill not leveling up because they were doing the same exact thing but that that seemed kind of funny that it was an event where it was strictly pve like you weren't killing mobs you weren't killing people uh, it was just go to this interact with this object turn this quest in and do five or seven of these at the same time it was kind of weird but have you guys done incursions at level 50 at the level cap and how is your rep looking with the uh the faction and also have you gotten any gear from the faction at all have you had any use to want to grind up the reputation for the classes that you guys play so spirit i'm sending it to you first it saved my druid so much because I was playing Boomy. I was like all over the map with my druid. I didn't get a lot of stuff from Nomer because I was mainly like focusing on my priest. So the Emerald, was it Emerald Sanctuary, I think? I got all the healing gear for Resto, like full on I with six out of six set. And it saved me and I had to use that druid to help another team out too. So yeah, it was, it was worth it for me on that front for sure. And then like you got Inquisitor Shawl f um, from Scarlet Monastery for priest healers anywhere I mean, casters. So the shoulders are really nice. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was worth. Hammer, have you done? Have you gone back since you leveled uh, to fifty and done anything? Nope, I, I can't lie to you guys. I have not. Um, I have not gone back. I went back. I did more actually on my when I was leveling my undead rogue um, than I actually did on my warrior. Um, and I, I, I guess eventually I will. But here, here's maybe another super hot take. But we like them. I feel like I really don't enjoy them. I, I like the idea of it. I don't like to me it's it's just you're instead of just sitting in Mara and paying a mage, you're just AFKing your brain and running in a circle. Um but I feel like I don't want to go do it for the rep right now simply because 
at the rate everything is going in like two weeks they're going to do something where like you can get the rep 10 times faster for something that requires a fraction of the time and and just seeing how everything is going inside like you know and and trying to create content on the side and also like farming my prebis for the warrior and all that stuff i was like eh, this will be something that i do if i'm like really bored and and like want to go do them um but even then i'm like well if i'm going to go do them i, I kind of want to go on another 40 of mine and maybe level them up to 50 by doing them um because i just have this feeling and i could be completely wrong that the it's going to be so much easier to get the rep in like a few weeks because it just seems like that's how um you know all of this seems to be going yeah and is the rep going to have any value at phase four when we hit right. level 60 or is it a one phase thing and yeah if you've grinded the exalted maybe got a piece or two then yeah cool you had to you had eight weeks to use that piece of gear then all of a sudden it's just replaced yeah exactly yeah so so these like massively long like not even that it's massively long it's just mind numbing like like spirit said before um like i don't know if i want to dedicate the time to doing that just because i know that it's either a gonna become super easy to get soon and i could spend that time you know doing something else or eventually the rep is going to be useless like don't get me wrong i i will do a grind like if we were at 60 and this reputation was like you needed it for like insane items or things that were going to be used for like four or five months whatever i have no problem doing those grinds um it's just i've seen this like accelerated pace pick up here and like i don't know how much time i want to dedicate to these things currently so all three of you get me excited sorry spirit because you can you can you can get me excited first what is like what have i got to look forward to usable <laughs> usable um you know already got to 50 i'm like i'm behind normally i'm sat here on the podcast saying yeah already cleared the raid like done everything like i'm raid logging already you know, to level cap. Yeah. yeah exactly that's that's me normally but unfortunately <laughs> there's another game that i've been playing which i'm not allowed to talk about um but what have i got to look forward to what have you actually been doing at 50 so you're doing 50 of course you're doing sunken temple once a week um but what are you doing outside of that professions i think all the epic professions that are in there now the the crafted recipes there's the wild offerings and stuff like that too did you max your professions did you get I to 300 or i haven't looked at it the nature of, of the guild that i'm in like we were just so like just in sunken temple and that was it so i haven't even had a chance to look but that kind of gives me something to look forward to now once all my tunes are up then i can go and like enjoy other things have done any right, dungeons yeah, well... has there been any reasons to do dungeons at max level or like am i all right in you know if i'm in i'm not gonna be because it's a fresh character but if i was in full gnome Ragon gear Oh, do I need to worry about getting any gear or just go straight into the Sunken Temple? Do some uh, dungeons. Go yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it, it's it's definitely... Here's the thing. I may, People may... It may seem like I absolutely hate the incursions, which I don't hate them. But I... <laughs> Why do you hate them? I, I, don't, I don't hate them. I really don't hate them. I, I just... I'm kind of against what they bring to this, but I can get into that a little bit later. But it i was just saying you know right before we went live that i have been actually having the most fun this phase that i've had all of all of season of discovery um and the reason for that is because you do need to get some gear um you'll you can spend all your time in doing princess runs if you want for your wild offerings that's what i did um and i enjoyed it like it feels like this phase like finally is starting to feel like classic end game uh if that makes sense like nomer to me just felt like a dungeon bfd was just a dungeon like sunken temple it's definitely a little bit more challenging i don't want to say that it's hard um but i i think it it gives the vibe of it i don't know it, it's it's kind of hard to explain it feels very different than nomer um and you do need some gear and I'm, you know, I'm sure there's people out there that are like, oh, I can go in, in greens and buy people clear, whatever. But if your whole raid was in greens, you're not clearing it. There's no way. Um, so yeah, you, there is pre bis to farm, which feels really good. Um, you do want to get your, your runes, right? Because most people's runes, at least some classes, have some really valuable runes. Um, and yeah, like there, there is a lot to do. Right now, I've been just my focus this week after this raid tonight is I'm finishing out farming rank seven, and I've been having fun doing that. So. 
Hell yeah. Are you going to feel the same way? Uh, are we are we going to get this same level of positivity in your videos in four weeks, though, or is this honeymoon week? Because, uh, cause like, you know, no, no, I, again, this is just me playing devil's advocate. You know, from everything you just said to me, it didn't sound any different to any other phase you've had. It's still like, get your previs, you know, do your professions, clear the raid, and then raid log. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I, I didn't take anything away where I was like, all oh, right, so there's actually reason to continue doing dungeons every week. Uh, I wouldn't say every week. So after you get everything you need from Wild Offerings and get what you need from them, I mean, is there really any reason to go back? I don't think so. Go, Spirit. I don't, I don't really... I wouldn't. So the Wild Offering thing for a, as a balance druid, I think I calculated I would need 30 of them. And you can get one per lockout, five lockouts per hour. So six hours, if I did it back to back, I could get all the Wild Offerings that I needed. But if I spread that over a week, two weeks, then did like five lockouts uh, a day or something like that then it would, it would take me at least a week to do that and then there's also as hammer said there's a lot of pre-raid gear because they upscaled some of the items they gave it more spell power for me and there's like five items from uh brd alone and like they they did a great job for my class uh upscaling that type of gear selfish it's not just it's Sorry. not just from the rare spawns like it was in phase two like i had to try to farm uh sm graveyard for a caster neck uh and it was from a rare spawn and i did lockout after lockout got capped sat there outside the instance for 40 minutes went back in tried to find the rare spawn the next five lockouts and that was brutal but now it's just like straight up boss loot is now upgraded as yeah. well so I, I that's a great change for me and that would keep me going back into those dungeons if uh, I had all my wild offerings and I still needed that pre-raid gear. Yeah, it feels like classic pre-raid gearing is what it does. Like, it doesn't feel how it did in the other phases, if that makes any sense. I think there okay. is going to be a part two where we do start to raid log, but not trying to bait you on this one, but Cat is going to be coming out and I'm almost kind of excited for that downtime because then I don't have to be as stressed leveling my tune and kata and then I can kind of do both at the same time and I often just going back a little bit I'm, I'm kind of wondering if that's why they sped up the leveling process for us too so I don't burn out the player base and because cat is coming out I don't, I don't, I, I'm not sure what that game is that you're talking about. I've not actually seen anything about it, but uh, oh, is, is, it. if it's worth checking out, I will look into it after the podcast and see if I can find some information. Uh, but no, I, 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 I agree. But that's what I mean. It, it, it's almost like, um, like, like I said at the start, where everything feels like it's being quick, you know, get through it, get it done, boom. But, but it is because there is going to be so much that you can be doing. You can be playing yeah. other versions of the game. You can be you know potentially going on this mop yeah this mop project which again i i'm secretly well it's not a secret i've fucking said it about 17 times and we've only been live for 10 minutes uh i i think it looks quite good i think it's going to be an interesting interesting event um and then yeah season of discovery as well uh, as i say i i'm like I, I enjoy i really enjoy season of discovery um on the basis that i can raid log very quick like that is the, that is the thing that like makes me play it if i'm honest if I had to be playing, you know, six, seven hours a day to get everything done and like, you know, it felt like you was doing that constantly all the way until the next phase drops, I would have quit. I wouldn't be leveling a new character now to, to play on NA with Hammer. I would have just quit. I'd have been like, fuck that. There's a new game coming out that I'm going to play. Um, a new old game. Uh, but the fact that I know, right, it's going to take me you know, a couple of days. I'll get it done, you know, just on, on the side. And then I can very quickly get to raid logging and just log on once a week. Maybe do a bit of farming for a couple of hours here and there, you know. But yeah, it's a very nice casual side game for me. And I know you can play it. Not You don't have to play it like that. You could live on sod and play nothing else. Um, but I think it's a big positive that you can actually get a lot done without yep. massive investment. Well, speaking of raid logging, Scotty, you're amazing at sending me these segues into the next topic of discussion, which is fun items that you can farm. You can get some stuff that's not going to increase your DPS in a raid or dungeon or anything like that, or in, like help you level. There's stuff like the bushes and the crates that I think you get from the waylaid supplies. There's a rainbow trinket, which I think comes from BRD. I tuned into Spirit Stream the other day, and I think she was going after that. So, Spirit, did you get the rainbow trinket? Have you gotten the, the 
the crate or the, the bush from the Whaley supplies, any other items that I haven't mentioned that could be considered like a fun item that's not really like, oh man, this is going to help me parse. I need to get it. Well, coming straight from Plunderstorm, I went straight for that bush. I was so excited that that was a thing. I've never heard the word a... bush so fucking much. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. It's one of those words that I don't hear very often, but I've just heard the word bush like fucking 10 times in one minute. I say it as many times as I can to Scotty because I know it cracks him up. <laughs> Especially when someone says, I went straight for the bush. I don't know, like that. <laughs> just, I can't help but find that funny. I'm sorry. Uh, I've got kids. I should be more grown up than this, but I, I can't, unfortunately. Oh. Family friendly cubicle chat. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's never been that. <laughs> Sorry, carry on no. anyway. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I thought it was cool that they they did that, and I think it was like kind of a cool um like layover from Plunderstorm, but also the STV event. Like it kind of makes the STV event a little bit interesting too. So you can kind of hide out yes. because your your name is just a dot. Like you can't see much. So it's a, it's a fun little like ambush way of like doing STV as well. But um, but yeah, I like that. I missed the jump on the BRD trinket, so you, all five people have to make the jump to get to the platform, and if what, they what don't... What platform? Wait, Wait, where's this platform at? So, from what how it was explained to me is that you have to go across, there's, oh my god, it's one of the Pyromasters, but I think it's one of the main bosses, I forgot the name of the dude's name, um, but you go across the bridge, and then you go to the left and you have to jump down, and there's a dwarf that's there, an NPC that will, you can talk to, and that's how you get, I think you get student fodder, you get yep. the rainbow trinket, and you get something else. But if anyone misses the jump, then the guy just despawns, and you have to go back into BRD and do it all over again. Nice. I missed the jump, because I had no second. idea. What's the point of student fodder if, like, you're, you're already level 50 doing BRD? What the fuck is the point of student fodder, then, if, like, you, there's no more experience bar, like, you're saving that for 60? Wait. Am I missing something here? Huh. Yeah. You also struggled getting the, the sleeping bag, which was also tied to student fodder in phase oh. two. So I, I see a no. correlation Are here. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> what? what? I, didn't, I didn't get either one, so I can't really give you grief because uh, maybe I would miss the jump too, but. I, it's, I got it on the other two characters very easily. It's because my first tune is a dwarf, and dwarves are shorter and they're harder to jump with. That is all. I didn't even know that there was student fodder in phase two. Is it the same amount as like three student fodder? You just don't get a, like a sleeping bag with it. You get a trinket this time instead. You get the trinket and the student fodder. I think you get like three student fodders, but I could be wrong. That's just you know how it was explained to me. Okay. Uh, have they fixed the whole? Oh, well, when I say fixed, it might be intentional. It might not even be bugged. But the um. The fact that the flag would disappear in Warsong Gulch, like you could hide the flag in Warsong Gulch using the uh, using the little trees. Oh, I don't know. I don't know either. I did Arathi Basin today. I haven't gone That's to Warsong Gulch, so yeah, I don't. I don't know. As soon as I saw that post, because I called it, I was like, these motherfuckers are going into battlegrounds with these bushes and these crates, and they're just going to be like hiding midfield, and they're going to be able to pop out of nowhere, and it's going to be a ret paladin that all of a sudden is in my melee range when I should be able to see a ret pally like going across the map at me and no oh hey there's a ret pally but no it's a fucking bush and now it's a ret pally on me so no i i don't know i don't know yeah, about i don't know about them the things bush. being usable in in battlegrounds like if i'm honest like that, that i they just shouldn't be able to be used yeah like fpv yeah, got, fine that's open world yeah yeah I'll agree i've been that. using it in arathi basin like religiously and i have so many hilarious clips that i will send you after this podcast uh, I I have successfully snuck up on an entire horde dominated blacksmith as a bush. I came out of the water as a bush. I made it all the way up near the, the wet flag, bush, <laughs> and I was sitting there, and they nobody saw. I was just surrounded by horde. I was just sitting there. It is such a good clip. I, I gotta send it to you guys. <laughs> uh, uh, mate, I'd love I'd love nothing more than than to see your bush. So yeah, just make yeah make sure you send me a link. You can charge right out of like bush form and just like immediately have uptime on somebody. Yes, yeah, that's that's so it insane. It's crazy, dude. It's awesome. I love it. I think it's so much fun. Oh, cool. What else do you what did you want to talk about? Go. 
Uh, it, it's kind of maybe a fun item. Maybe it's it's parse related as well. Like when we've seen it, how uh, busted these things have been. But Dark Moon Fair cards. Have you guys oh. started to go for any Dark Moon Fair cards? Are they any worth for your class? They were a little bit busted. I know one of them had to get uh, patched because it was proccing every single like attack that you would use, and it's supposed to have like a proc percentage or something. So there's been some changes to those cards, but are you guys interested in getting Darkman Fair at all? For a thousand gold right now, no, but I want them. Yeah. Yeah. A thousand that, gold. That's, that's, that's my take on on our server. The what is it? Sand. What was the one that was busted? Was it Sandstorm? Sa sandstorms. Sand sandstorms. Basically, yeah. Maelstrom, but more or less. Yeah. That's basically going for around three k. So I just like I I have to just get it out of my mind. There's no way. I'm getting that. No, 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 no way. Not if you buy it. No, not if you're buying me it first. You're never going to be able to afford to get yourself one as well. <laughs> There's no way. Wow, uh, yeah, that's uh, ridiculous. So, but... Hammer, you said you started to do a little bit of PvP recently, and that's one thing that I really wanted to do in Phase 3 was PvP. I'm only rank 3 right now. I got some decent honor. I think I did two ABs, and it was like 2k plus honor like per yep. battleground like and we lost both of those so uh what's your plan to help rank up to seven to spam a b do some um stv blood moon events yeah so i mean i actually saved i think like a hundred and something commendations from last phase for the because they said they were going to go away in two weeks um so i saved them to do my like six to seven boost so i think i only have to farm like another 40k um and like you said even if you lose it's like 2k and honestly i've been having fun with it even though i am alliance and pvping as alliance right now is just atrocious because of shamans um you know basically if we get into an arathi basin and i'm playing with you know five people we have like healers and stuff it's, it, we have a good time but if we get into a lobby where there's like five plus shamans it's just an instant loss we, we can't win i i have another clip i could send you guys of a single shaman walking through eight people on the alliance just killed every single just kept going no one could stop this shot what was that me it was the most ridiculous thing that i've ever seen in my life and uh and i bet the shaman enjoyed it though raging yeah i've been <laughs> raging on my stream quite a lot lately so people are seeing like a different side of me than they normally see but i enjoy it like we were having fun and and i i just want to get rank seven because the gear is so good so so speaking of gear hammer you're amazing at these segues too thank you so much can you tell a difference from phase two and phase three with the amount of stamina that they've added to the gear for phase three like are people surviving longer is it is it just like people doing one shots and then like tab targeting one shotting something or is there a little bit of more gameplay involved now it it seems a little bit more balanced if you're not fighting a shaman literally that that's all i can say Dude, I have screenshots of getting hit for a 2100 lava burst, and then the overload hits me for 1100. I have 3.6k health. Like, it, you just get demolished by shamans, dude. It is crazy. But other than that, um, it, it is. it does seem a little bit better. I mean, the stamina, in my opinion, didn't make that much of a difference. Um, but it's definitely different than last phase. It's a little bit uh, better. And I have gladiator stance now, so that's kind of fun to mess around with. So, Spirit, looks like you have something to say about PvP. Get it off. Go ahead. I play healer, and it sucks. It's so <laughs> rough. Especially a clothy healer, it sucks. And those shamans, it's just that burst damage. Like, I don't understand how they think that we can heal through that. Especially... You can't. Even, you can't. There's, there's no way. You just die. Yeah. And it's so, fr it's so frustrating as a healer. So how, how yeah, are the they performing damage. in PvE? Um... Like elemental shamans. I've not looked at the DPS rankings. I know they went out today. But... I haven't either. Yeah, I haven't looked. I'm gonna look right now, actually, because we don't have them. Uh, yeah, there's been there's been so many changes to the raid, the classes. I don't know if looking at DPS rankings this early is. Yeah, no, that's why. I, I, yeah, that's, that's why know? I weren't really bothered about DPS rankings. It yeah, was it was yeah. more personal experience, like you know, spirit and hammer. If you've been in dungeons with early shamans, or I don't know, like you've been in raids with them. I, I don't know. Their alliance, Just how would they seen what they do? How would they know? Yeah. From a mechanic standpoint, though, it's in Sunken Temple with disease cleansing totems and poison cleansing totems. Like, they can just throw up a totem and, and cleanse yeah. that off. We can't do that. We have to dispel everything individually, which also hurts mana. So, it's a little bit skewed, in my opinion, as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Mm, yeah. 
Uh, um, my, my, I, mean, yeah, I was haven't... thinking more along the lines of, sorry, Hammer, more along the lines of, you know, like if they're that overpowered in PvP, can they physically be nerfed? They might not be able to be nerfed because it's really going to then butcher them in PvE. You know, if they're dominating PvE yeah. and PvP, then it's easy. Yeah, they can go, yep, we're reducing all the damage by 10%, or yeah. we're lowering the proc chance of overload, or, you know, th there's loads of things that they could do. But if they're suffering in PvE, but they are just like godlike burst in PvP, that's going to be a difficult one for them to do anything with. Yeah. It'd be cool I'm... to like a, an aura with a pally for like nature resistance aura or something like that. That might even it out a little bit. But then that affects boomkins because you're lowering the boomkin damage. I don't know about that. <laughs> no one plays boomkin, it don't matter. My it's wraths need to hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have either of you done the Blood Moon event since it's been uh, scaled up, I guess you could say, to level 50? Is like how are the coins working if you have done it? Yeah, I, d I did it the day after launch. I farmed all the 25 coins for my epic two-hander, which looks awesome. Um, and uh, it really feels exactly the same as last phase. It's, it doesn't really feel any different besides, you know, maybe the PvP feels a little bit better if you're not fighting a Shaman again. Um, but yeah, it pretty much works the same way. They did nerf the commendations. So, like, trying to gain honor through the Blood Moon event now is definitely way worse than last phase last phase it was basically 25 copper coins for 250 honor which was a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. um and now i think it's one silver coin so it's basically 100 copper coins for 250. are you uh, getting the coins honor. kind of like the same way but it's a new coin so it's, it's yep. still like six or eight or something like that like if you're in a group per yeah like yeah yeah like, if you're in a, if you're in a good group you can get you can get i mean i've gotten close to 2k um, and some of them, if you're with a really good group and you're right near the boss at the start. Um, but yeah, it works exactly the same. The only difference is that you can farm less honor through the Blood Moon event now than last phase. I think they want to push people into Battlegrounds again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I which I, I honestly think is a good a good thing, because yeah, I, do I don't think it's fair that I was able to stack up 60,000 honor and just, just hit to 180 something times um, and get that honor this week. But I did PvP a lot in Blood Moon, so. All right. Well, uh, anything else on that, Scotty? PvP stuff or no? You know that don't really interest me that much anyway. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, another topic here is the waylaid supplies. You can now get exalted with that reputation. Have either of you gotten to exalted? Are the rewards enticing you to get to exalted if you're not there yet? I see that there's an 18 slot bag. Uh, there's BOA helms now, which look actually decent for like a level one to even like 15 20 character uh so that's pretty nice if you have a max level two and you don't have an alt yet i think and then you want to start fresh on a level one so any any uh way late supply stuff there spirit i wish it was easier to get uh the boxes to fill it's yeah. especially if you're in the dungeon you're rolling against four other people so it's 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 tough i mean i like the idea of it i like the bind on account stuff to help if you want to like go from one up with an alt but yeah i just wish it was easier to get is there any reason yeah, I, I, uh... to use why they didn't put um like xp on them you know like heirlooms but even if it was just five percent on the heads oh. and uh, you know like that did confuse me and i know like that's me being like very raf raf orientated you know but you, you get a bind on account item it wouldn't have hurt surely to have five percent bonus xp on them to make yeah. them yeah even more I think more people would be bothered about them then. You know, if it was like, well, I want to get them for all, all my own, you know, to, to make future leveling quicker. And that does mean you've got to have done it once anyway to get the benefit. Uh, it was a bit weird. If they increase the, how much money you get while you're wearing them. Oh, yes. there we go. <laughs> and it's worth. Yeah. I, I, I thought that there was a, a fun item on it. I was trying to look it up really quick. I don't know what item I put there. It was the bush from the Waylaid? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, don't don't, don't say it like that. Don't say the bush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you, you literally could have worded that in so many different ways, and you went with that. The tree? I don't know. 
<laughs> I said something earlier, and I thought you were going to call me out on it, Scotty, but I got stuck in a pickle, and I chose an option, and either way, I was screwed. But thanks for not pointing that one out. You can watch the VOD back and try to figure out what I'm talking about. But perfection... You really think I'm going to watch this back? Do you think I'm mental? Oh, yeah, yeah you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I don't want to hear me. But, uh, profession Spirit, you said that you were working those up a little bit. What professions have you worked up? Is it like gathering? Is it engineering? Uh, uh, tailoring? And then do you plan on getting the epic crafty, crafty gear? Yes. Tailoring, engineering on both tunes. Um, I'm speedrunning on my, my priest. So I need NG. Um, and <laughs> I had this bright idea to, t to take my druid and put her into uh, alchemy engineering. Uh, so that's a little bit slow going right now because of, yeah, <laughs> of gold and things like that. But tailoring, engineering, and yeah, I'm planning on getting that big crafted for sure. Uh, Hammer, any any professions? You at least 250 on your main two professions on your main character? Or like, are you taking a little slow? I, I'm taking uh, blacksmithing a little slow, mainly because to go from 225 to 250, it's like 400 gold. <laughs> Um, but engineering is, I think, at like 275. Um, and I do plan on getting the shoulders. I'm just kind of waiting for these prices to, like, come down a little bit. It, it's just, it's a little out of control right now, at least on my server. So once that comes down a little bit, probably by the end of the week, um, I'm going to I'm gonna start working on blacksmithing and go do the uh, quest line. What I'm hearing is I need to level mining on my paladin. That's literally, yeah. that, that's exactly yeah. what I'm hearing. And then I can funnel you all the ore, uh, so, uh, you know, bars, so you can level your engineering. Uh, and then that, that's me bribing you for a raid spot every week. Fucking <laughs> easy. Dude, it's like 250 gold just in steel bars to go from 225 to 250. Oh, I'll just bot mine and it's fucking so quick. No effort as well. Uh, not bot, not bot. I meant like, uh, uh, go, was there anything else you wanted to talk about? You, you meant like the past tense, like I, like you bought, yeah. Yeah, 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 like yeah, all, yeah, all, yeah, all, yeah. autopilot, In autopilot. Yeah, okay. okay. That was what I meant, yeah, I meant autopilot, like as if I was a robot, you know. But we, we have been <laughs> fucking close through one. these topics, and this give us at least a full hour to talk about Sunken Temple. So now we can kind of take it down and really break down the raid, the main meat and potatoes of phase three what's making us log in and do all these outside raid activities because it's now a seven day lockout scotty go ahead say it i see you you, you had something go uh what i had was it was funny how uh, you were talking quite quickly and then you went right we can really slow it down and then for some reason you slowed down your speech as well <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you was like right we've really got through those topics quick so we can now slow it down and I, I, I it was the vibe change dude i was getting everybody prepared like audio wise uh, into the the slowness of the pace now because i'm telling you we've crushed through those a lot faster than i thought we would well we are we, we've, we're on a bit of the time restraint so that's good that's what we need to do so let's talk yeah. let, let's talk raid i want i want severely educating you know on on sunken temple I want to know everything because, as I say, this is the the first time in season of Discovery where, you know, it's not day the, the day the raid opens and I've gone in and cleared it. You know, this is the first time where everybody's cleared it and I haven't got a clue about anything. I, I watched a little bit, don't get me wrong, and it looked like every boss had like one mechanic that looked very, very, very easy to deal with, but the bosses just had a shitload of health. So it was like, have you got enough mana to get through the fight? It looked like the the actual main mechanic to the bosses to me, but I could be wrong. So tell me I'm wrong let's not do the the boss stuff just yet i, I want to hear how far you guys got the first lockout because the bosses did get nerfed but they they didn't get nerfed completely right away so hammer how far did you get that first lockout after hitting level 50 did you get the full eight out of eight were you six out of eight like how, how did that go for you so we actually went seven out of eight which is weird because the seventh boss is harder than the last boss um, but we were on a time uh, time constraint because people had to get up for work. So we pretty much probably needed like one or two more attempts on Avatar of a car and we would have downed it, but we just, people needed to go. They were We were so over our time. Um, but yeah, we, we went seven out of eight. How many nights did you go in there? Was it like two nights, three nights or? It was one night. It was about, we were in there for about uh, three hours-ish that's pretty solid yeah seven yeah. out of eight i'd be happy with that spirit yeah. how, how was your first lockout did he i think you got two tunes your first lockout right 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so how did that go for both tunes that you got up? The druid kind of doesn't count because I just came in for the last two bosses to help because they had to like just get some extra people, but I was still able to get the two last bosses on that tune, which is really cool. But yeah, we were, we went eight out of eight. We went in there on Saturday, so the nerfs really didn't happen quite yet. I mean, we got through it, you know? It took us three, three nights to get to eight out of eight. But we were dealing with around a kiss, like pretty much not nerfed. It was, how, it was hard. How many was hours hard. a night were you in? So like three three nights, but how many hours per night? Four to five hours a night, I think. Dang. Yeah. yeah that's some prog. <laughs> it was prog and it was the consumables too. It was like, it was a lot. Worth it, but it was a lot. Sounds like, so doing, a, this sounds like doing a heroic five-man dungeon with Go, that. Four, <laughs> four to five hours, what? Three nights, so... Yeah, like 12, 15 <laughs> hours. That, that's about how long it takes me to get through a dungeon we go. We, we got our justice point, Scotty. Let's not talk about that anymore, okay? <laughs> it, it, that, that was your way of talking about Kata without talking about Kata. I, I, see what you did there. I don't even I know what you're talking what about, you mate. Did there. I, I didn't so, mention that, that, that forbidden word at all. I don't know what you mean. So, Spirit, was it a full guild run that you had for those three nights? Did you have to pug people to fill those slots? And can you also elaborate a little bit on how the uh, the feeling felt going from 10 player to 20 player from Nomer into Sunken Temple yeah. with, uh, with the guild that you're in? I'm going to go on that first. I was a little bit bittersweet for me because I kind of enjoyed um, the close-knitness of a 10-man. But the 20 man play is better because you can do more stuff and you can kind of play off of each other. There's different interesting comps, but I did kind of, I did miss that like close knitness a little bit. I'll get over that. Um, our, we did a full guilds uh, run for my priest and I believe the second group I went in there with, they pugged a few people, but it was mostly, it was mostly guild as well. So Hammer, same thing. How, how did that go for you? Like that change from 10 to 20 and how many raiders in your Sunken Temple clear or seven out of eight for that first week was uh, actual guild members? Uh, 18. We had to pug two people. We had to pug a healer um, and a mage. Um, and yeah, going from 10 to 20, I personally, I definitely, I, I, def I agree with what Spirit's saying about the close, you know, closeness of, of the, the 10 man raid. Um, I definitely got really close with my group. Um, but going to 20 feels good too. Uh, I really, I feel like it makes it feel more like a raid, like I was saying earlier. Like it doesn't just feel like a big dungeon anymore. Um, but it definitely causes some issues, at least in my guild. Um, cause we had kind of like three and a half, like five flex people, like three ten mans and then like five flex people. So it's, it's caused a little bit of upset to some people uh, that maybe didn't get into like the core 20 um, but we're, we're working through it we're trying to get a second one going for everyone else see I, I, I just want to chime in here even though I've not done sunken temple I just want, I just want to chime in more on the, the you know the 10 to 25 man um, and the fact that like 10 man the problem with like BFD and Nomrigon is like you're absolutely right they, they did just feel like a 10 man dungeon not a 10 man yeah. raid um, but they did have a good opportunity to actually make that work, you know, to make them feel like epic raids, but only with 10 people. Because there, again, there, there is an expansion coming out at some point soon that, that does exactly that. You know, the raids feel punishing, they feel rewarding, they feel everything, and there is only 10 of you. So you can have that close knit 10 man group. And, and where can I find that, Scotty? Um, I, I don't, I, I can't really talk about it. I think it's a private server. Well, actually, I mean, oh, oh, oh. based on my experience of, of playing it so far, uh, to be fair, I think it feeling like a private server <laughs> server is giving them compliments. Um, but yeah, uh, like it, that was the problem for me. You know, it's, it's what they're trying to cater to, which I totally get, but what it could have done with, like, which would have just made it night and day different is it stayed 10 man so even sunken temple could have been 10 man but you had a 10 man normal and a 10 man heroic and you could only do one difficulty a week like whichever you decided to do um because then they could have really challenged the super sweaty world first guilds that want to go in and do hard content but then also you know for the sake of like one item level or two item level less on the gear like you can go in and get almost as well geared like doing normal but a lot more casual a lot more a lot more um sort of new player friendly uh like, like 
the problem uh, for me with sod is the whole they don't really know who they're trying to cater to are we trying to cater to the retail players that are that are coming and playing season of discovery are we trying to cater to the the classic andy zoo like they can only press one button and deal with one boss mechanic like who who is it who is it for uh whereas if they was to actually like sit back and think well we can cater it to everyone if we was to have multiple difficulties yeah. i feel like that is just problem solved boom yeah i agree that's a great point. I, if you watched Notice Prog too, you could see like I think people were a little bit taken aback by how hard the raid was because the, you just you think of Sod like the first two phases it was easy. Like Nomer was okay, BFG was okay, and then Sunken Temple came and everyone was just like, "What the hell is going on right now?" Yeah, and it's yeah, very yeah. unexpected uh, and very good to see. But like you know, in uh, Agrand again even though i've not been actively playing season of discovery a, a great deal in phase three um you know i've still been looking at everything every piece of news that goes out of every every tweet from agrand you know and he was like oh but it was quite refreshing to see you know a classic version of a raid that wasn't cleared on the first night and it's like well it's not like that's that's not the way to look at it like that, that's not nothing to be proud of when you're trying to create a game that is for everybody it's for all skill levels uh, and even in an, in, an, in an interview with me, he was like, you know, it's great when you can have, uh, you, you know, more people in a raid and it means they haven't got to be quite as skilled. You know, that, that the whole the whole 40 man versus 20 man thing. He was like, you know, they haven't got to be as skilled. You can like, you know, bring them along for the journey almost. And then they put something out that even the best classic guilds can't kill. It's like, well, pick a fucking lane and stay in it, will you? Yeah. I think I I did see a couple people getting one shot in Sunken Temple, which I'm sure we'll get to that type of mechanic in the raid. But have either of you two gotten loot at all? Like, there's a chance that you've cleared it twice. Maybe you haven't cleared it twice and gone back in the second time. But have you gotten loot? Did it feel good to get that loot? Was it tier pieces? Was it off pieces? Spirit, go ahead. What, what kind of loot did you get? I got the ring. I got the the thing where you turn it in, you get the buff oh nice oh, yeah. oh so like the ring so, dropped the buff yeah okay i haven't turned it in yet because i'm just gonna wait so if the guild needs it i can like you know schedule a buff for them but uh but yeah that was really cool and i got oh my god what else did i get i just tunneled on the ring oh i got the gloves i got gloves which i needed nice hammer any loot for you uh you're the uh, are you the raid leader because if you're the raid leader i'm sure you got loot come on i i put the groups together and like do do all that stuff along with some other officers but we actually have someone else who leads the raid because I, I don't like i don't want to like yell at everyone um wow that's the most I did. I got fun a part <laughs> <laughs> you could do that in there scotty <laughs> oh he will oh he, will. he, he, might, not, he might not ask him to he's yeah. just gonna do it yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think you're gonna enjoy raiding with these people that everyone's pretty pretty fun and uh we have a good time i'm looking but, forward um, to it i got a pair of legs pair of plate legs there they weren't like set piece legs or anything like that but i can't really use them yet until i uh get my tier um because i'll lose like a set bonus so but felt pretty cool i mean i was honestly just happy doing the raid i didn't even care about getting the legs like i, I really can't stress enough that i genuinely enjoyed it and to kind of just quickly go off what scotty was saying before me personally i feel like they maybe shouldn't have even nerfed the raid yet and the uh, reason I, why uh, yeah. is because once you have the information, right, and you have the guides and you have this and maybe you have a week's worth of just gear and your pre-raid bis and all your new runes, the raid is, it's going to fall over. Like, it, it just, that's just how it is. So I think, like, and I understand everyone was struggling, right, but most of, most of the struggling raids, in my opinion, like, no one had farmed their pre-bis or anything. They were going in straight last phase gear and... You know, some of these people didn't even have new, their new runes and all this stuff, you, you know, and I think that it would be such a different story if the raid was still tuned that way. And I know it was very overtuned, um, but I can't help but feel like if it was still tuned that way next week, people would just be clearing it still. No problem. Um, because after going in there myself, it really was just the help thing, like like what you were saying earlier um like yeah there are some definitely some mechanics and things you need to know and like avatar of hakar is very similar to like a mythic plus type of mechanic where like one person can wipe the entire group by not doing the mechanic um 
but I do really think that like people would have been able to clear it if everyone had gear and experience it like one or two times like and to me that adds to like the fun of it like I enjoyed the first run so much because like there really wasn't much guide knowledge out there and you're kind of trying to figure out your own strategies as you go along and it makes it more fun instead of just going in there knocking every boss over and then logging off you know mm, yeah plus I think if you're also have a harder raid the players that are in there are, are getting better at playing the game too so if in longevity right. you'll have better players in the game for end game content too because well for there's mechanics you have to watch ragnaros all of that so yeah i wish i really wish they didn't touch it at least until like another week or two yeah like a week or two yeah i just would have liked to see how it was like how people could have done it with all of their pre-raid you know farming like isn't there's no way any of anyone that was racing for world first would have been able to do like the wild offering stuff like that trinket is insanely strong the ring is really strong like all of that gear is so incredibly strong and like having another week or two of it be really really hard would have been really cool to see like people struggling with it a little bit and then you could tone it down so I saw that they not only nerfed the boss's health down for like across the board, but they also nerfed the trash health as well. So Spirit, how was the trash in Sunken Temple compared to Nomer? I haven't seen it at all. Is it just like a three mob pack, four mob pack? Is it are tanks trying to pull like ten, like two groups together and AoE down? Like was that nerf nerf necessary or was the health on the ads or the the trash? Sorry, fine. I didn't think it was bad. We didn't really wipe on trash at all. Um, as a healer, especially a priest healer, I thought it was really fun to heal. And then dodging ghosts on top of that, like thumbs yeah. up. Kind of sad that they nerfed the, the the trash health, but if we're speed running, then maybe it's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> so when we, so, I just want to, I just want to address a comment while we're talking about a raid. So Nick, yeah, go ahead. Um, say not nerfing the raid would mean 99% of the player base would not be able to clear it. I, like, I call bullshit there, right? And and the reason why is because you've compared Nota clear, not being able to clear a, a raid day one, which they hadn't been able to do thousands and thousands of times on private servers uh, with the exact same comp, you know, where they've got... That they know that they're going to have those people at level 80 playing the exact same class that have been on war main or privately hosted private servers like I've done myself during all the while um, and literally wiped hundreds, hundreds, maybe a thousand times that nobody even saw and then saw them wiping another X of, you know, tens and tens and hundreds of hours on the PTR and then went in and done it with ease. It's not, they didn't go in and do it night one. They went and done it probably night fucking 200 or something in you know it's about who puts in the most when you're looking at raf or you're looking at other ones that come later uh you, you know you're talking i've i've already done every single raiding cat like uh you, you know recently as in on multiple She's characters in the last year Ooh. shit um you're a full-time streamer now give damn it sub yeah all right they've the got they, they've got they've got one each they've got one each um but uh, yeah, I've uh, obviously I've already done it on that game that I will try and not. I was getting passionate. I couldn't help it. Um, you know, but uh, that don't mean when I go and clear it on night one, it was really a night one clear. Like, the, you know, I found Gnomeragon harder than I found ICC. And Gnomeragon was easy. But Gnomeragon was harder because we was pulling the bosses and had absolutely no idea what they're doing. Um, so, like, you... <laughs> I'm with Hammer. Like it should have stayed untouched, at least for a, at least for a reset or two, and been like, all right, clearly, you you getting more gear, you you know being able to farm the first six bosses, uh, you know, clearly that wasn't enough to give you enough of a power spike to actually start to make the the content uh, feel comfortable and and accessible for everyone. Uh, but I don't think we should really base something on it needs nerfing because this one guild that play on ridiculous amounts of private servers and make sure that they get every single mechanic down ahead of launch for a night one clear can't do it that is the wrong way to balance a game it's a bullshit way yeah. to balance a game yeah and that's a really good point too because like you said they've did hundreds and hundreds of attempts that people haven't even seen um and like 
this you are watching those attempts because there's no ptr right so you're watching people actively try to figure out mechanics in the raid and do the mechanics and learn them and figure out strategies and what works better what doesn't so you're pretty much watching the process of like how these raids are figured out how you watch you know you could go on youtube and look up these guides like this is how those guides happen um so i just think that it's really cool like that night i went to bed and i woke up the next day and it still wasn't cleared i was shocked you know i was watching alando's stream and he went black screen for like six hours and was just losing his mind they were, i was just listening to them but he didn't even have anything on his screen um and i just thought it was the coolest thing like it, it made kind of like an event out of it right like the same way i, I don't know anything about retail or watch retail content but i know that you know world first race and all that is a thing um so i think it being harder was really cool whether it was too overtuned or not you know whatever but i think leaving it for like a week or two really would have it would have been pretty sick so i would have liked to try it myself with some gear with all the pre-raid and everything not nerfed and then to nick I mean, they... again because he did sorry spirit just one sec i just want to address you're good. You're good. it um no worries. you know because because he's, he's replied saying like the point is if nota can't do it then what experience do you think dad guilds will have with it that week and he's absolutely right like nick you're you're a hundred percent right it's like well if a guild of this amount of rated experience can't do it then you, you know what th this is where the issue lies where it's like well who are blizzard catering to yeah. for season of discovery so you're right i'm not arguing with you you're absolutely right um and that was goes back to what i was saying sort of half an hour ago where that's why it would be perfect to have normal and heroic so you can cater to everybody but when you've only got one raid difficulty like yeah who, who are they yeah. catering towards i mean i would say that the dad guilds didn't even level up to 50 that first lockout so right, they, that... they didn't even get into the raid to experience like the pre-nerf yeah. uh, content so uh, yeah. nerfing it that soon just yeah it seemed really weird if it was like tuesday the reset after like five days after launch or whatever it was and then they decided to do some nerfs cool I, I would have felt a lot better with that but like nerfing it like after 24 hours whatever it was that was really like it i was like man yeah that that felt bad and why does everyone sorry go ahead spirit it's like it's fine you go ahead no no go ahead go ahead go ahead trying it on saturday and then going back a day after and day after with the nerf it was almost a little anticlimactic when you got the kill like i wanted to feel that like yes. we did this and we did it felt really good but it would have been better if it was still uh, maybe a little untuned or detuned but still it would have felt better I think. yeah like why does everyone need to clear the raid on the first week but like, why Fucking is that amen. like the mentality i don't Bragging understand rights. like why that is now like I, like i've been playing wow since original vanilla right i was like 13 14 years old at the time and like tbc is the real first time i remember like raiding back in the day and like we spent hours in karazhan we did not full clear like from what i remember like the first week two week whatever like and it was fun like it gave you a reason to like want to farm gear to do other things in the game farm gold for your consumes all this stuff but there's like a mentality around sod and classic in general where like if if you if every single person can't clear this week one it's it's not it's not good but in reality, I think it is good, and I think it's healthier for the game and for the player base for for everyone to have a different experience with that. And maybe some people that would look at that and be like, wow, it took them so long to clear it. And then guess what? In two or three weeks, those people get some gear and they eventually clear it. You know how accomplished they'll feel. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, that was a real thing back in the day for me playing WoW. Like, I felt super accomplished, um, like, getting those kills. And I feel like that, like that everyone needs to clear week one kind of just diminishes that completely yeah so you're, you're literally so. saying exactly how i felt for a long time uh, and my my example that i can't really give with season of discovery because it's not relevant as in it's not uh, it's not about ray progress or anything it's just not relevant because of the, the direction sort of that things are going um but if you play raf and you needed the 15 percent, is probably where i would say as a fair a, a fair number like if you needed the 15 percent buff to kill the lich king on heroic in the next expansion that comes <laughs> check me out 
you ain't gonna clear all the content before firelands comes out like you you won't like you, there's no two ways about it if the lich king uh you you couldn't you had to wait to the 30 percent buff to be able to kill it you you won't be clearing bwd and bastion of twilight before firelands comes uh but and that's fine that's that shouldn't take away from your experience you should really enjoy it and know you have now even more reason to go back to that content you know like once you start getting geared in the next phase you go back and you've got reason to go and kill the bosses that you didn't kill before um like there's i i see absolutely nothing wrong with that i i don't feel like if you for some reason ended up in phase three of sod and you, you've only killed seven of eight in sunken temple uh, because it is genuinely quite difficult then don't worry have you enjoyed it still like did it really take away from your enjoyment that there was a boss that was too difficult for your guild if it was too difficult for your guild and you're not the problem and i mean that in the nicest way possible you know as in it's like you know it's just everybody's trying their hardest but you know, like you, you know you're all pulling together but you still can't get it down if you feel like you're better than everybody else and you should have killed all the bosses then you're probably in the wrong guild so yeah. usually scotty or even hammer tonight has led me into a segue but this time it's been alex in the chat and talking about world buffs so the, we can now get the song flower buff it's like a extra crit percentage that some classes can benefit from we also have the new uh so or yeah sunken temple buff that you can get in booty bay or yojamba island and if you have those buffs it does make the content a little bit easier so do you think uh going back with the world buffs if everybody in your raid had the world buffs would have been an option after people have learned the fights to make that content easier and clearable and then yeah maybe have uh delayed that nerf process because of the access to world buffs can, can I just backpedal really quickly? I'm just a yeah. little tiny backpedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think having different raid difficulties would kind of fix it. I think <laughs> if there are dad guilds or, or people that are struggling to kind of give them a satisfaction as well so everyone can play in a way, maybe that's the fix for it? But they shouldn't have nerfed it. <laughs> um, I think world buffs, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Huge, 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 huge difference. Have you gotten a uh, song flower? I think that's the only really like new world buff that's out right now. Or have you seen anybody in your guild show up to raid before the first wipe with the song flower buff? Well, you can boon it and yeah, yeah. you can boon them, but mine got griefed. It's a long oh, story. Oh no, <laughs> long story. I actually just did the quest last night to uh get the salves to be able to cleanse them for everyone in my guild, so I'm I'm fully buffed up. And like yeah that's another thing like having these world buffs like they didn't have that either right so that's true it's massive dark moon fair the new raid buff and song flower like plus the flask consume that you get from the raid too like it's so much extra power for your character that like i'm telling you within seven days everyone is just going to plow through this raid yeah, and I, I, I want to backpedal just slightly as well, just just for um, not not necessarily just Nick. Obviously, I, I appreciate the, the backwards and forwards. Like you know, you've made some really good points. Um, but more for everyone, this is not me advocating for like the content needs to be hard. Nerf it to shit and make it so like ten people or twenty people can go in and just press buttons and things die. I, I don't actually care either way. Um, what what uh, what I always complain about when I am complaining, which is barely ever because I'm such a positive guy, um, is the lack of consistency. Now oh, that's it. It's like surely yeah. it didn't need to be launched in a state where Blizzard were like, wait, these bosses have got more than bosses in Molten Core. Do you reckon that's going to be all right? Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, chuck it out. It's like it is more about what who who and what it's being catered for like i've got no issue with sod having easy raid content in all fairness it's the first time you're ever going to hear me say this i almost would prefer it because i'm playing sod very casually i don't really want to be going in and wiping in raids for you know 5 10 15 hours before bosses go down uh cuz i've got other other games where like i'm i'm kind of looking forward to that experience um you know the, the experience for sod for me i'd be fine with things just falling over uh but at the same time there's a big big difference between what sunken temple launched as compared to what it 
probably is now you know after the nerfs uh so yeah it's more that it, it's, it all comes down to who is sod for yeah and it could be for both yeah yeah with with a with difficulty yeah difficulty yeah. scaling it could be for both 100 percent. so uh i'm curious what kind of raid comp each of you had hammer and spirit uh like how many tanks how many healers if you don't know like off the top that's that's totally fine i'm just throwing this out there at you guys if you had a uh inkling of what that looked like for your specific raid group so hammer uh, how many tanks were you rolling were there tanks that were like off tanking and then switching some runes to dps on certain things how many healers did you have and same thing with the healers were they also trying to like dps certain boss fights or trash and then switching their runes and then going back to a healer role um we had two tanks just two straight tanks uh, i think we ran five healers like five just full healers not like arcane mage damn and um then we had we had two tanks two melee groups and the rest were just caster dps we, had, we were very melee heavy uh which made it a little wild um but yeah we, we really didn't struggle that much i think getting up to hakar we had in total maybe like five or six wipes two of those being our main tank getting just punted down the hole um for uh dream uh dream scythe and weaver um but other than that yeah that was our comp pretty melee heavy two tanks i think we had five healers because uh, when we did it you know we were also going with who was 50 and and who like had like pre raid this and all that stuff so probably wasn't the most optimal thing but it, it worked uh, what two tanks did you have was it like a warrior druid like a rogue did you have a warlock tank in there we had a pally tank and a feral druid pally tank feral druid okay all right yeah. so no no new warlock or rogues getting to shine in phase three no. so far for you okay okay not yet no spirit how about you do you remember what tanks uh there were i mean as a healer i would imagine you know your tanks in your raid so uh, yeah. and you're also your fellow healers so yeah how did your raid comp compare to hammers it changed a little bit over the those span of those few days um but we went with warlock tank and uh bear druid and it was it was kind of cool to see warlock tank up there doing it especially yeah, Arrakis, yeah. and our healing comp um probably two priests for one of those groups and the other group was uh druid priest pally and then i came in as like a flex like dps resto healer whatever i was just trying to help whatever they needed but um but yeah I, we did the three heal thing we had a fourth who possibly if we needed some more heals to kind of flex it but it was interesting to see like what to do with the comps because there's a lot of talking about should is it a more of a melee thing is it a range thing like what do we do here so it kind of feels like you need a good mix of both in my opinion right like there's a lot of like interrupting and i don't know i felt like the the ad cleaving was really fun um as melee too on aranicus like that was an absolute blast like that fight was my favorite fight in there yeah it was fun it was it was fun as a healer too it, it, when we had two priests in our raid it was cool because one of us went coh one of us went penance and penance on Aranicus was so important especially with divine Aegis. and at the time um palm wasn't propping divine Aegis, so you had to penance the tanks and i felt like i was an icc again just pre-penancing tanks oh my god yeah it was fun uh, um I hammer did you go back into the raid yet since that first lockout and experienced how it felt with the like post nerf the the only time i've been in there was was after the nerf we're going in again that was on monday on monday okay, okay. and we're going in again in 30 minutes nice so this uh, is oh, this will be fresh won't it then yeah so you're going in fresh clear yeah. Yeah. are you streaming it yeah yeah heck I'm yeah streaming it. Watch. <laughs> and then um there's tier sets we've got new tier sets with this uh raid uh are you guys looking forward to your tier sets did they nail it on the head with the set bonuses uh, some of the set bonuses have changed since like the data mining and stuff like that so you can throw that in there too if your set looked like shit at first and then it looked amazing after a change or it looked amazing and then they changed it and you're like ah, i don't really care about it anymore 
So, Spirit, how, uh, as a priest, you can touch on Druid as well if you would like to, but how is your tier set feeling as a, a healer? Um, I'm a little bit torn on what to get to do because there's been the benevolent and then there's malevolent, I think is the other word. For, yeah. I like the fact that there's crit on there and I like that there's MP5 versus spirit. I I was on the priest discord today actually kind of poking around and asking to see what people were thinking and I didn't really get much of a response. So I'm a little bit up in the air just because of divine ages with with um, with crit. But if I'm not running, it depends on comp. It depends on healer comp. So yeah, I'm a, I'm I'm not so sure. Did it also uh, make you think about your rune selection too, with that potential tier bonus? Like, do you think you would switch runes because of a, a three set or six set bonus? Um. I think since we have dual spec, I I think I would think more. What spec am I going to go holier disc versus runes? Uh, and Hammer, how's your tier set feeling as a, a warrior? Did, are you just DPS warrior? Yeah. Arms. War warrior? <laughs> warrior, yeah. Warrying. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it got nerfed, my set. It was, we were getting, we had a 5% chance to proc an extra attack. Um, and it got nerfed down to 3%, I think it is now. Yeah. Um, but that's still, in my opinion, is going to feel really good because I'm playing sword spec arms right now. Um, and I get tons and tons of extra hits and wild strikes and it I just feel like it's gonna feel great getting that um, so I'm pretty excited the other warrior in my group on Monday won three tokens because we didn't hey. we're not doing plus one or anything so he won three Aww. tokens in one shot you should have fucking um, just kicked so... him from the guild mate what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> like, it would have been fucking gone like, trust oh me oh my god but yeah he's probably gonna pump tonight so Anyway, if he, do if he don't, definitely kick him. <laughs> yeah. If, if it was a two-set bonus and he got three pieces, I would have been like, hey, man, like, what are you doing to get that third yeah. piece? But it's a three-set bonus, so getting all three pieces, that's, that's a big deal. So I don't want to hate on him too bad. But, uh, Scotty, have you looked at the mage? Because that's what you were playing last time I saw. Um, uh, I, 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 honestly, I, I've, yeah, I have not looked at any of the tier sets. Not since the data mining. So if they've changed, I don't know. Uh, mage, I won't be playing. I'm going to be strictly paladin. And I'm going to be holy slash rep. Probably whichever, which, whichever's needed most at the time on a particular boss fight. But, um, I, I haven't looked. No, I genuinely haven't. You know, as I say, I, I'm taking it super casual. I'll, I'll worry more about that when I'm 50. Which at this right. rate, which at this rate should be when uh, the next phase launches. <laughs> I thought the the healing bonus or, or the the three set bonus for the healing gear was interesting because I just pulled it up just so I made sure it was like correct on it. But your three set, if you get benevolent, um, your holy damage spells cause you to gain 60 increased damage and healing power for 15 seconds which kind of translates into some pvp stuff too and i think that's going to be really helpful especially for healers in a pvp situation plus if healers have to flex they have that that option they don't have to really worry about having two separate tiers or two separate sets of gear you'll be able to do damage as a healer yeah which i'm all about i, I like an offensive healing playstyle, even in um e yeah e even in pve you know like being able to do more than just heal you know, so being able to get up close and interrupt and be, yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. On a PvP server, too, if you get caught off guard, yeah. you have a little bit more of a chance to survive. Absolutely. So, I should have put this in the notes, and I didn't. It's nothing spectacular, but Hammer, how did it feel going from the tier tokens in Nomer being everybody has a chance to get it to, like, class-specific tier tokens? your warrior got three of them so do you think that was like a good thing because it was split up and it just so happened that his spec uh tokens dropped or how has that felt uh i I, th I like it better to be honest i think there's uh five classes on the warrior token actually but I'm it, not it's pally sure shaman that. i think so it's like it's still four. Oh yeah yeah three, that's true yeah, yeah yeah um yeah i mean i think it's it's definitely better and it seemed like one of each token was dropping right so we were getting one like warrior token and then whatever the other token is um her every time that they drop like we i don't think we ever got a double warrior token or anything like that 
Mm, that could have been pure fluke, I'm guessing, because I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I would imagine that you can get all the same token drop from the same boss. Uh, that, that's a good yeah. point, though. What, what does it feel like in terms of uh, like 20 man raid and the amount of items that are dropping off each boss? Does it feel like it's a like a reasonable amount that are dropping? Could it do with being more or less? Yeah, because they said that they were going to increase the amount of loot because it's a seven day lockout versus three days. So I've been thinking the same thing, Scotty. Uh, yes. I mean, it seemed like a good amount was dropping. We were getting like two tokens and then three or four other pieces of gear per boss. So, I mean, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Spirit. I don't 100 percent remember on that. I think it was four, four pieces of gear and two tokens. Um, and then there's eight bosses, right? So it's a lot of loot you get in there. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Did you find all the loot was being used by uh, players that could have used like the male gear, plate gear, leather gear, or w were some items not even rolled off or like immediately gone to DE spirit? Like, how did, did you, did I'll be you honest pick up you, on that? I didn't really pay attention too much on it. I was so focused. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. Moving on with it, yeah. Hammer, did you get to notice any of that at all or? Yeah, I think we had like one, uh, like Umkin belt or something that uh, didn't need to be rolled off. Like no one wanted it. But other than that, I pretty what? much everything of course that I, dropped. Of course I didn't. No one plays <laughs> Boomy. <Yeah. laughs> no, yeah. nobody plays Alliance Boomy because <laughs> Torn, Torn's better. So that okay, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, yeah, pretty much, pretty much everything that dropped was was needed. Cool. Uh, do do we want to go? We've got about twenty ish minutes. Do we want to go? By, like boss by boss i know scotty was interested yeah in I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit of a breakdown yeah. for each boss for from both of you and your experience of each boss uh in terms of you know because i am going to be doing damage as a rep paladin so i'm interested in what hammer's got to say in spirit i'm going to be healing so also yeah if we can go through the what the bosses are like and what to expect it'll, it'll it genuinely will help me yeah, so I'm just going off of Warcraft logs, uh, like the order of the bosses here. Maybe it's not the same way that you guys encountered them in the raid, but Atal Alarion looks like the first boss in there. So how was that boss for you, Spirit, as a healer? Um, it wasn't that bad. The first one was easy, got through it, no problems. No mechanics that you had to like worry about, like to reposition or anything? You got to just kind of stand still and heal and it you was just GG? Have to yeah, you just watch where your back is, and then you don't. If you don't get knocked off of that, then you're good. Which I I like that mechanic, honestly. I thought that was really fun. Wait, is this the boss that you could like knock into the middle of the room and fall down to the bottom of the instance? Is no, no, that's, okay, that's okay. Scythe. Yeah, right. no. <laughs> so hammer, you were doing melee DPS. So how is that uh, for that first boss? Uh, the first boss is it's 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 a fun fight because it it pretty much is like a tank and spank type of fight. Like you know, right before the boss, you gotta like click the little ropes and get shot up to the top and activate the four altars. They're like channeling the boss. Um, if you don't do that, um, the boss is like super powerful. Like you you can't kill the boss. Like pretty good opportunity to add a hard mode or something right there. Maybe um, it's, it's a secret hard mode and it drops yeah. extra loot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you do, you climb the rope, you go up top, you activate the boss. And then, yeah, it's just, he just like spawns pillars around the room that buff him. And basically you need to position yourself so that when you get knocked back, you destroy the pillar behind you um so that was and that's pretty much it other than that i mean the pillars i know they can los healers i'm pretty sure so it's not like a crazy mechanic but it, it was a fun fight did either of you wipe at all in this fight or is this kind of like the first boss of nomer where if you wiped it was like guys what are we, what are we doing here do we deserve yeah, to be in this yeah. raid or yeah you, you walk through that boss i think okay uh, how, sure how long through. roughly like kill, kill time for both of you were, were we like was it a few minutes or a couple of minutes or um I'll tell you right now let's see instantly I both are jumping on warcraft yeah. logs they're like oh <laughs> I, I don't really know i thought it was trash <laughs> i see warriors are pumping on this fight and every like top log is well below a minute like nothing is even 50 seconds to a minute it's like 49 seconds to 28 yeah. at the fastest like ours was two around two minutes mm, okay we had a minute and 36 on that one okay. oh yeah flex on them spirit give, give a little <laughs> flex on them yeah <laughs> uh, uh so they previewed this next boss the fest unless there's anything else anybody wants to interrupt me on for that first boss okay so festering rot slime they showed a little 
a preview of this slime going around like the circle of the the raid uh how is that fight spirit that is a healing check 100 percent healing yeah. positioning check that, that that fight is hectic and it's fun as hell it, it was actually my favorite one in one of the favorite my favorites is that one where that uh, poison cleanse totem comes into effect for shamans because it's very poison esque, like cloud wise and stuff? That's an interesting point, and I just realized it now because if you're getting cleansed, you're dropping that glass, that that poison cloud, and that could actually script the raid too. You want to be on the side of the wall, so I'm I'm assuming horde should probably always want to like hug the wall. I mean alliance too, but that could actually grief them in a way. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like that boss in uh, Max. I, I forget what the name Grumpy of it was, but yeah, if you instantly cleanse there, or even uh, Halion, if you instantly cleanse, then it, it kind of screws your raid group. You want to give a little bit of leeway to get that person out of the, the raid. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, even Hammer compare ha- it to Lich King a little bit with a disease. You know, you don't just instantly dispel because there's something yeah, to dispel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to time it. So Hammer, how did that boss feel as a melee? That sounds kind of interesting to hectic. dodge some clouds yeah yeah it's hectic and it's like it, it's a very fun fight in my opinion it's like something straight out of like luigi's mansion like you got this like giant slime <laughs> chasing you through a hallway and you're like everyone's like kind of backpedaling the whole way and luigi's you're like attacking mansion. these like candlesticks uh, on the side of the walls to like I knock mean, them into the center of the room luigi's and as he eats them he slows the down one. and then eventually he'll stop and like that's when your like huge burst window is um but it it was very fun you know, and you could have like ranged bait those like slime pools to like one side, right? So you can have like a clear path on the other side. Um, I, I thought that fight was really fun. Very hectic for melee, especially because um, you're fighting the front of a boss that's walking towards you. And melee, this mm. didn't happen to us in our raid, but apparently like he can just like swallow a melee and like insta kill you um, if you get too close. Is, is there, is there, yeah. is there a, so yeah. Like, uh, yeah, g- genuinely again, as someone who hasn't done it, um, why are you having to be in front as melee? Because he's chasing you in a circle around the hallway. You can't pass through him. But, but who is he actually chasing? Like, is he chasing the tank or? Yeah, yeah. So why there's, can you not stand there, behind as a melee? Uh, you can't go through the boss, from what I understand. Like, no, he'll, uh, he'll uh, but maybe not. Up. Maybe not directly behind. You know, I'm thinking like stood at the side. You know, so I, I'm thinking more for Paris. You know. Is it like? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're kind of off to the side. When I mean like in front, like I mean he's coming towards you. Right. Okay. Um, again, so again, I'm not, n- I'm not nitpicking. Please bear in mind, I have not, I do not know these fights. So you know, I'm just listening to what you're saying, and I'm thinking, man, if I'm ret on that fight, that sounds fucking shit. If I've got to stand in front yeah. of the boss, like there must no, be no, somewhere you're, I can stand that's better. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not a big add-on guy, but with hammer mentioning like luigi's castle if there was like a week or mansion he never said castle mansell, li- li- sorry, mansion sorry. not mansell either listen you, to your you guests can tell, mate <laughs> you can tell i never played that game but i was trying to get there uh <laughs> but if there was a week or a, that when somebody interacted with a candle it had like the luigi cry like the oh, i don't know how it sounds but then that would be not like not like <laughs> I, I would it was kind of a murloc too it was kind of like a <laughs> Luigi <laughs> Murloc, but I tried. I did it my best. Okay, we're moving on. Stop to getting Mario boss. Brothers wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he called Mario Mario. Uh, Mario Atal, Brothers. <laughs> Atal Eye Defenders. Uh, what does this boss entail? This looks like a longer fight. Uh, the second boss, the Rot Slime, looked like a little bit longer than the first one, but this one I'm seeing fight times of like three plus minutes. So h- how did the Atal Defenders feel for you, uh, Spirit? Can you explain the fight to me again? Because the names are kind of eluding me right now. It's this, been. This is originally in Sunken Temple. It's all the mini bosses that are around the top, and now they're all tied together. You have to kite them from one to the other, CC in them, I believe. Oh. It's like a gauntlet of like the six uh, six bosses. Uh, we can let Hammer go first, and then yeah, let maybe it'll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hammer, how did a, a tall defenders feel? Yeah, I mean, I, I really, I honestly can understand why spirit doesn't recall this fight because it's a literal joke like it it feels like a like like dungeon trash to be honest like they each come at you one at a time um and they each have like one mechanic right so we got i i think you can get them in any order i'm not 100 percent on that but we got like zulor first and he does a corrupted slam which is basically just like a frontal cleave so you just move out of the way 
um, you kill him. Then the next one comes out. One of them has like a bunch of totems that they spawn. You got to kill the totems. Then the next one comes out. You have to interrupt chain lightning, so on and so forth, right? Through, you get all through all six of them. But the mechanic really in the fight is that each time you kill one, they come back as a ghost and they're unkillable. Like you, they, they'll just stop at like 1% health. Um, so you just have to CC them using like shackle, hunter traps or whatever else. Now I remember, yes. It was fun to be able to or have to shackle again. I really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah, and I, I had a feeling they would do something with that fight where they was all linked together. And I said that before we even knew anything about Sunken Temple in a video. Because, like, yeah, there, there's... There, I knew there would be some fun things they could do with that because it's interesting. Again, I, I haven't watched. I just... I, I don't even know where I know what happened in that fight as in, in terms of them all being linked together. Um... But I thought it was quite cool that from what you just said, Hammer, they all actually kept their original mechanics. You know, one of them yep. did drop a totem that summoned skeletons. One of them did chain lightning. One, of, You know, so it's like they kept their yep. same sort of classic flavor um, mechanics. But yeah, then you had to deal with it in a bit of a different way. So that's cool. Uh, and I'm yep. assuming zero challenge as long as you've got people that know how to TC. Yeah, definitely. It sounded like a, a loot ship. Yeah, that's pretty much what it feels like. Yeah. Did, did it drop tier tokens too? Can you remember like the loot that it dropped? Or was it just kind of like off? I don't remember. Is... Okay. I don't remember either, yeah. So next boss is Dream Can I, I just, I just and... want to go back to that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Really quickly. No, no, I, I know it's a boring boss to talk about. But um, so uh, obviously, um, Hammer, you went in sort of... I don't like saying post nerf because that makes it sound bad. But you, you know what I mean? You went in a, a few days or a couple of days after other people. Spirit, you was in yeah. there day one or like day two like early saturday saturday so it was it was it still all pre-nerf and fairly new like would, would would that encounter have been if you didn't know anything about the raid like would it have been that easy or did you both know already like oh we need to cc these on the way around because i watched nota or progress yeah. or whoever like because you watched them do it you knew what you had to do would it be so face roll if you went in completely blind on that boss, if you didn't know you had to CC things, I think it might be a challenging or having to do kicks and interrupts, but um, as a healer, honestly, it wasn't that bad. Okay. And what about you, Hammer, as, as melee DPS? You know, if we're, if we're pretending that we've gone in night one before anybody else, like, would we literally have just gone, mate, this is a joke? Or, or would we have been like, shit, we, we, how are we going to do this? Yeah, I mean, without knowing beforehand, like, before we went in, I was watching everyone. I was, like, you know, writing stuff down, obviously, to just know what we were supposed to be doing and stuff. Right, so what, with, I a, didn't with know a pen? Anything. Have you not got a computer? Yeah, I have a fountain pen. <laughs> I write on, on my desk here. Oh, my God. Um, Notebook that I do the same thing, with, honestly. Really? I've got yeah, Goog uh, Google Docs. It will change your life. Knowing that you can just, <laughs> knowing that you can just have something to type on at all times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get. I've actually got a genuinely got a whiteboard um, in the bar behind me, which no one can see. Um, and and uh, but, but my whiteboard is not used for writing down uh, what bosses do, what mechanic is. It's for writing down. I've only got half a bottle of Jaeger left. Uh, I'm down to four bottles of gin. And then I go to the shop and I refill that and then I wipe it off. You know, so that so the bar's always stocked. Man, sorry, tangent, but true. <laughs> That's how seriously I take my how to, I take my alcohol uh, intake. I have to have a whiteboard to tell me what I need to go and buy. And use a writing boss tactics like that. down. That's fucking weird, man. Yep, yep. If I didn't have that info, definitely might have been more challenging for sure. Um, I can imagine going in there blind, especially free nerf, it being challenging because you know some of those bosses did have like. Um, I think it was Loro. He had like a. He just was constantly resetting threat. So like basically, you had your tanks like spamming taunt, and like if, if he dropped threat and hit a melee one time, they would die. Um, so that's like that was pretty cool. The, the the other dude has like a an attack speed buff. So you have to like kite him to wait till till it falls down, or he's and then he spawns axes, or you know what I mean. Like there was definitely mechanics, but at least from my experience, like after the nerf um, and knowing what each of these bosses did, it was super easy. Okay, cool. So, 
Did, did either of you wipe on this boss? I know I, I forgot to ask that for the past two bosses, but uh, did you wipe it all in this one? Or because you had that kind of advanced knowledge, it was just kind of like, yeah, we do this, we do this, and boom, we got loot. We didn't wipe. No I remember. I remember when that was over, I was like, it's coming back to me. I remember saying out loud, I was like, oh, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you feel like it's like the pre, like it's about to start a boss fight. Like that's what it feels like. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah, we didn't wipe either on that. All right, what All boss right, is we, next, go? We got Dream Scythe and Weaver. Uh, looks like rogues are pumping on this fight for some reason, but I have no idea of these mechanics. Uh, Spirit, do you remember this one? Uh, yes, I remember this one. Uh, I didn't mean it like that, but I mean... <laughs> Again, as long as you're not getting knocked down into the hole, it's really not that hard to heal. Just don't put yourself in a position where... Um, <sighs> you're getting into the green stuff that's around that circle the aoe stuff as far as healing is concerned aoe healing was good i was running penance bouncing palm it's it wasn't bad with instacast or anything like that is, is so is this the two dragons where they take it in terms of basically doing like a flyby and you will get knocked back and you're yeah the whole you're in like a circle you're in a circle and everything's yeah. poison on the outside yeah th this is is this one that people struggled with on on like night one because i was watching um certain certain men to be very good players i'm not i'm not gonna call them out cricks like I, obviously i'm not that sort of person but <laughs> I, w I was watching certain people do it and was like i don't understand why they're wiping i kept watching and, and i was really watching i just finished either a podcast or a stream one or the other and i was really watching and i was like why do they keep dying i could not work it out i'm like you're getting knocked back don't have your back to the big fucking hole in the middle of the room but make sure you're far enough forward so you don't get knocked into the green shit but then people kept dying i could not work out what is deadly about that fight so this is me being ignorant because i haven't done it so now you can tell me why it is actually more difficult than it looks from a range perspective, having to wanting to plant your feet and just not have to move, I think that's part of it, possibly. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but the tanking thing too is whether to get the dragons together or separate too. I think people are still working that out. So I think yeah. that's why there was a lot of wipes happening. Is there, yeah, it, it, are, I... there are there two fights similar to this where you're inside a, yeah. a, a circle? So maybe it's the next one that I'm talking about that might be harder then. There's only one where there's the hole in the middle of the room. Oh, okay. No, it's, de it's, definitely, it's definitely this one then. Yeah, 100% okay. it's this one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's just... Um, real. I mean, really, the only, like, actual mechanics in, in the fight is the wing buffets that knock people, right? And and when both dragons come out, I think at, like, halfway through or, like, 60% or something, you're, you're fighting both at the same time. Um, and definitely in the near future, people are going to start putting them together and just cleaving them because they share health, right? So... Um, but then they go off to the sides. They'll go, they go in kind of like an L shape and then one will do a wing buffet and then the other one follows up like a second later with another wing buffet, like basically trying to get you to fall in the hole. Um, and I think like once, once you realize like the safest place to just go stand is like actually right at the hole because they can't knock you into it if you get knocked away from there, um, it becomes super easy. And then they, I think when the tanks pick them up after that, they can like breathe on the raid if they're not positioned accordingly, so... So was this one that was super tuned on night one, maybe? Because I'm trying to give the I benefit think, yeah. of the doubt here. Is, is this yeah. one of them had a shitload of health and, and was actually yeah. a, a battle of attrition? Okay. Uh, that, that, yeah. That, yeah. I was watching people struggle with it, too. So it definitely was one of the more overtuned fights. Yeah, and I, I, as an Saturday, outsider, I didn't get it. Oh, was it very easy on Saturday, was it? I, it wasn't easy, easy, because we wiped, I think, once or twice on it. Um, but I, I think it had gotten a little nerfed at that point, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. we wiped twice on it too. Our tank got punted right down the hole two times. Uh, we're really short on time at the moment, so Hammer, is there anything else that you wanted to bring up and talk about before we have to let you go? Because you've got to get into Sunken Temple and do all these bosses that we've been talking about for the last half an hour. No, I'm just, uh, I I've been enjoying this phase more than I've enjoyed any other phase so far. I actually feel like I might play a second character. Um just because I do, I really do enjoy the raid, and I enjoy like the pre-raid farm. You know, it's one of my favorite parts about classic. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's a lot of fun, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, when does your raid start, uh, Hammer? 
8 p.m so in 10 minutes 10 minutes and where can people find you streaming that uh twitch.tv slash hammer dance we will be live perfect and obviously your youtube videos were the amazing and purely sod centric where can they find those uh youtube.com slash at hammer dance gaming awesome well i tell you what before you do dip out I'm, I'm gonna put this over to go because it's still there's still an hour and 10 minutes until fallout launches which uh is what uh, like a tv series that i've been waiting to watch on prime and it's not out for another another 70 minutes yet so i've got no issue with um us calling the podcast there and we'll we'll let spirit do all the shout outs so you know everywhere you can find uh uh probably epic healing gameplay that i'm gonna have to watch myself to so i know what i'm doing on the fights as well uh and then if we want to watch hammers raid for an hour before i, I jump off and we'll have a few drinks that go that sounds brilliant that, yeah? that sounds fantastic yeah okay I'm, I'm down for doing that then i i can learn while i'm leveling watching the, the master himself uh <laughs> so spirit where can people find you and obviously thank you for coming on as well thank you guys for having me and hammer nice to meet you as well nice to meet you too I, let me see if this works can you guys see my background <laughs> oh look at that twitch.tv slash spirit chill with two t's two yeah. l's and chill that's how you normally spell chill but uh spirit.classic for youtube on youtube yeah okay. i've been wanting to do some videos but i've been so like just trying to get tunes leveled up but i want to i do some more rune videos like i did last phase awesome well and, i've i've got your twitch sure in the description already hammer i've got your youtube in there already but i'll add hammer's twitch and i'll add your youtube um pro probably tomorrow morning i'm not saying i'll remember tonight but it will happen tomorrow sounds good very cool cool well uh, hammer oh, go on. yeah hammer spirit thanks so much for coming up. this was one of like i keep saying it like episode after episode like this was really one of like my chance to shine if you want to say that in hosting the show usually scotty and i like bounce back and forth take turns i feel like i took control of this one because scotty wasn't really interested in sod so i i really felt like uh i enjoyed this episode so thank you both for coming on tonight he talks so yeah, much so much shit honestly uh <laughs> literally such a fucking bell end <laughs> I, I'm, I'm being honest get back in your bush red beard no one gives a fuck what you think <laughs> I mean, this this week has been phenomenal dude we had carrot last night what a fucking legend that guy is and now we have hammer and spirit just like carrying the sod show it's, it's been fantastic it has no it's been great and i do appreciate all of you yeah I, it's been a great episode as i say it, it's it's an uh an, a, a really unnatural vibe for me to sit here really having to take a back seat but i have i have enjoyed it because i've been able to level my paladin at the same time but the learning is not stopping there we will bid spirit and uh and hammer farewell enjoy your raid hammer i believe you're raiding as well spirit later on would you uh, raid him later? Tonight, no oh is it not tomorrow, tonight? Oh, tomorrow. Yeah, okay okay well we're gonna uh yeah we'll we'll bid you farewell and me and go are gonna fire up hammer's stream as soon as he's live and we're gonna watch it with everybody for at least an hour all okay. right sounds good thanks guys cool bye, see you later nice see you. take care bye take bye care, bye. Guys. bye 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 uh right the cameras are gonna go all really funky uh, yeah, for a yeah. minute ob obviously, obviously. out of the cameras <laughs> uh mine mine's fine mine mine's actually perfect mm. to be honest oh, oh uh, okay. let's get rid of the other ones i can use that for you oh yeah they're not they're not too bad other than i can see my fat face twice i'm not really a fan of that <laughs> uh where are you so you're next to me so you're there okay uh so mm. yeah well if, if you're interested like if any of you have been more following uh, the uh, and i can say it now because the podcast is technically over um if you've been I, following the cat now, yeah yeah if the, if you've been following the cat content then um you know sod is still something i'm playing but also not something where i'm like super super hyped about talking about it too much you know whereas i genuinely am actually quite excited to watch hammer raid he's a guest he's just been on the podcast yeah. i i, I want to watch him and 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 see what's going on because you got to remember i'm leveling a character to join his guild and raid with his guild so if it's a complete fucking car crash i might stop playing completely 
<laughs> so, if we get to the second boss and we're bored shitless of Sunken Temple, then it's just like, all right, guys, thanks for chilling. Uh, technical issues have arisen. Uh, we gotta, we gotta go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th thanks for joining. Um, but again, every everybody in chat, thank you for obviously joining us and watching the podcast. Appreciate every single one of you. Um, if you want to watch this with uh, a little bit of commentary, and we'll, we'll see what's going on in Sunken Temple, uh, then feel free to stay. Bread. But the I should be good for like all the extensive shit I need to buy now, for so. tonight's round. We just got two bosses left, so uh, I got to use the restroom. I, I've been holding. I'm gonna get in, something so to eat here. here. I know there's a lot of news that broke, and I'm sure you're itching to talk about some like the Mr. and 